mic on. go what's up everybody we are live hmm progression hold on a second this ain't right because in the meantime I know it's been a very long time since I have been here we go Boom, 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 boom. This is exactly what we do. So, what's going on, guys? I'm really happy to get back to streaming. It's it's been an odyssey since the last time, so we're back at it. And as you can see from my last video, I have been releasing a Dharmal East jump run guide. So this is what I'm going to be doing today for. A little bit and if you guys want to just jump in ask questions you will have the in real time answers and you will be able to see how I do it exactly and you'll also be able to see the all the different things that can happen in the runs as you do them over and over so I think you guys will like it The main thing that you want to start mastering as you start doing those is really the the patrols. The patrols are really what is going to kill you. Because when it comes to the boss fights, it's just, you know, you can take 10 minutes to do the boss fight if you want to, especially the first one. The second one, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make it last too long. But you could still do it with the appropriate gear. Oh, just want to make sure that I come really close. If you ever have those little whiplashers that spawn from the, the warp pods, just make sure you fight them close to the wall so you don't aggro anything else in the meantime. But the patrols are really the things that will get give you the most trouble because you can't deal with them. You can deal with it yourself, obviously. As I'm seeing in the video, like they, they will kill you instantly. Even the big, uh, the big lashers. You have a few of them in the garden. Oh, nice serrated petal. Oh, lasher root. Boom. They will just crush you. So this is really what can be very hard, because as you do the run over and over, and you don't really get anywhere, you can start getting frustrating so mastering the patrols and being able to gauge how far you can go from the enemy NPCs is really going to be helpful because once you are very comfortable you can easily gauge if you're gonna aggro or not and then you'll know you'll have your little tips and tricks to really do it faster and faster as you'll start getting more comfortable and okay this tier is not patrolling over here and here ghost mushroom it's really going to help you to have double gathering profession if you're doing the full runs because obviously you will make more money and over time it's going to accumulate but it's not necessary oh there it is. Oh, actually, I'm going to put the X. It's not necessary. You can still make a lot of money while only having mining. But if you have double gathering profession, which is... It's 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 basically WoW, WoW's red pill. So I've been told by one of my guild uh, members. And he's right. I mean, especially if you're on a low populated server... You can go out in the world like in Eastern Plaguelands like I used to do and then you can just really double dip into the uh, 
the mining of the RTVs and then the herb gathering for the lotuses, the, um, the plague blooms, the silver sage and all that good stuff. So you can really make a lot more money. I'm pretty sure you can make more money at any point in time just going out in the world and farming like a madman on a medium to low populated server. As you start getting to high and full obviously there's it starts to be very crowded and even on you know even at crazy times during the day like two to three in the morning you still have a lot of people farming so it's not it's not at oh nice a second ghost mushroom in the same run those are quite rare actually normally you get maybe one or you get none getting two is very lucky I mean, it's about one gold to one gold fifty each. It's not the, it's not game breaking gold making, but it's a little, uh, a little bit more gold that you don't say no. Mm, okay, let's let's dance with this little mall over here. And the trick for this boss is really to be able to get your skills off as soon as they come off cooldown because otherwise you start making the, the fight longer and longer. So if you really want to make it fast, 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 that's the way to go. It's always... Uh, the thing about gauging where you want the mob to be because if the boss is too close to you when you go around the pillar and then you cast your spell what's gonna happen as you've probably seen in the video or if you haven't um, he can come around the pillar and then if he's right here where my mouse is like right beside then you don't have a way to cut line of sight with him anymore so that's gonna be extremely problematic and this is not something that you want. Boom. Boom. Oh, big crits. So, so far it's going pretty well. I mean, my record, the, the record victory, I've been trying to beat this new record I set a couple of, uh, couple of days ago. I think it's, uh, no, it's been a week and a half, yeah, a week and a half ago. I don't know how I did it, but I killed the boss in like 5 minutes, 12 seconds. And ever since I've been trying to beat that record, but man, it's, it's impossible. Legit impossible. Like, I've probably been very lucky with the high rolls on the uh, damage roll for Exorcism and Holy Shock, so... Because ever since I've been trying and I've been doing it, you know, extremely carefully and... But still, you know, as, as long as he goes down steadily, this is what you want to aim for. You don't necessarily want to do it too fast because... When you start seeing that, oh my god, like I'm about to beat my record, but you're a little bit too far behind, you start getting a little bit too uh, enthusiastic about it, and then you start doing some errors. And those can be very costly, especially on Zevrim. Because the worst is having to come back to the instance, first of all, and then you need to go from the entrance all the way to the boss. So that's like a good five minutes every time you die that you need to do and then if you died while the boss was at you know 50 percent five percent ten percent i mean then it's even more frustrating because i don't get him too close boom
because then it's another if you've been fighting for five minutes well that's another five minutes so you lost 10 minutes just by wanting to kill the boss faster so you really really need to be careful with that so just take it easy take it slow slow and steady wins the race like like it says so and that's that's what's kind of nice about farming in an instance is that you have the whole instance to yourself so whether you take 10 minutes to do the whole run which is actually impossible right now especially solo with i, I mean i don't know how it would be possible you would have you would need like insane gears it's in gear but still it's not gonna matter if it takes you 10 minutes or 30 minutes to complete the run the rich thorium veins at the end will still be there at the end of the day so you don't don't have to compete with other players that might uh, take it from you so it's not like farming out in the open world where you have those variables that you need to take in consideration you don't have that in here hey what's up Philip I'm doing good I hope you're doing well as well especially in those time but uh, I'm doing well nonetheless it's like this meme that I've seen on social media is most people um, being told that they need to stay at home for like two weeks and you, you see like people being like all afraid and oh my god and then you see like the, the gamer that's like <laughs> just laughing his ass off and that's pretty much how I feel like as long as I'm doing my part and I'm not uh, staying at home and making sure nobody gets infected from me well although I'm not infected but still you know I'm doing my part and I don't really I don't really mind staying home I can work on uh, can work on many different things related to the channel and stuff like that so oh boom so yeah, that's what it says behind. Uh, it took me 5 minutes 52, which is uh, very long. Your fastest kill took 5 minutes and 12.56 seconds. So that was extremely fast. Oh, Satir Bow, yes. That's the best loot that you can get from that dude over here. Just 3 gold, 30 silver. Woo! And I thought, you know, because I haven't been streaming in a while, because, I mean, it's been so many things got in the way, and then I went on a cruise, and then, you know, we had the, I had problem with my computer, problems with my internet and stuff like that, so I haven't been streaming in a while, but I figured, why not do the runs that I have been doing the, the vid a video on, so you can ask me some questions if you can be about the run, can be about anything else, you know. I'm here, I'm here to chill, do a couple runs. Yeah, have maybe two or three more runs after, actually no. You can do three more runs after that, before needing to go back to Ironforge. I think that we will be fine with that. Sitting at 1500 gold right now, so. This is what's very nice. Is there a book? No, there's no book. This is what's kind of nice with having a legendary to farm and materials high high end level material to farm for is that you you start realizing how to make more money and how to really make your time worth because and you find new techniques to to farm gold that you maybe would not have thought about if it wasn't for that legendary farming so I mean, some people are quite lucky. Like, if you're a warrior and you you're, you're you are your guild's main tank, you might be helped heavily by the guild or the guild bank uh, to get your thunder fury right away. Not me. It doesn't mean you don't deserve it or you didn't deserve your legendary. But you know, you, you don't really need. You don't really have to go through that whole process of starting with you know your bindings and then saying, okay, what do I need? Holy schnitzel! I need 100. Arcanite bars and blah 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 so it's quite a it's quite a process that you go through what spec am I rating with um, well it's the same spec that I've been <laughs> that I've had for a very long while right now 
Um, it's, you know, pretty much standard holy build for 31 talent points to get holy shock. And then I have points into the retribution tree. That dates all the way back to um, the beginning of phase two when I was doing world PVP with my guild. So basically it was something to add a little bit more damage to my uh, arsenal. But would I recommend this build? Absolutely not. I would say, you know, toy around with different things. I would probably, if you really want to go heavy PvE, obviously you want to go for uh, protection instead for the shorter bop, longer freedom, etc. And you could even, if you wanted to only raid, you could, you know, uh, give up holy shock and then go for a uh, sanctuary instead but this is what i'm going for ah but that's it's a little bit sad that you gave up on your paladin but i mean if it wasn't suiting your playstyle, i mean it's it's maybe for the better But I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. But sometimes it's been uh, it's been a little bit of a rough patch. I've had rough rough patches while playing my paladin. You know, just struggling with the uh, what I want to do versus what I am forced to do in in a way. You know what I mean? Like and then having to, like having dreams of being a paladin, getting some good gears. But then you know, obviously you're. Your loot council doesn't really allow you to do that and you know it's fine it's it's fair and square because I'm getting some pieces that are good for a paladin and, and etc so but yeah I've had to make some concessions that at the end of the day I'm a little bit sad about but overall like I've been playing a paladin for years so I don't mind but I can understand that they are not necessarily at their best in classic Mm. Yes, uh, I understand. I mean, when I first started playing Holy, like, I, I love healing, but, it, like, I, on private servers, my first ever uh, vanilla character was a priest, and I really enjoyed playing a priest because you have so many spells, and, you know, it feels very nice to play. The, the play style is much more... Um, encouraging and fun than you know just spamming flash of light so I can understand that you don't like that you can't raid as red or prod yeah yeah that's the thing you know you, you need to like I don't know all that much about red to be honest but I can say that you know f for our guild we have a main tank that is a prod paladin uh, it was not intended to be that what damn it was not meant to be that way Whew. Sorry, but what happened is that we had two tanks, two warriors that uh, quit the game, and one of our officer had hold up. One of our officer had a prod paladin that he was gearing on the side, and then it happened that you know there was a tank spot open, so he was like, "Hey, I'll just take it," and he had very good gear to start with, so and we helped him obviously gear him up, so. It's possible, but again, Prot and Ret on on a Classic WoW, in Classic WoW, require a lot. But I can tell you that you you will wait until TBC, that's fine. But when TBC hits, oh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Red Paladins will have Crusader Strike and a bunch of other stuff. I think they will get the talent that increases their uh, spell power. Uh by an amount equal to like 60% of it, their intellect. I think that's in TBC if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong. And then uh, Prod Paladins have a, almost a whole new tool, uh, toolkit. Like all the little talents that r don't really make sense in Classic, like Readout, um, or that are not optimized. Uh, readout, we are talking about uh, Reckoning and those talents. Um, Holy Shield, they are being tweaked to make them insanely good. So you're going to have a lot of fun, absolutely, in TBC. Which, you know, there's there's very good odds that it will be released eventually. Because obviously uh, Blizzard released a Hearthstone expansion. 
about the uh, Outland, Ashes of Outland. And when I saw that, I was like, hmm, I, I already thought about, you know, oh, that, that probably means that they will release TBC. But then they also sent some people, I didn't get it yet, but uh, a survey about, you know, what would you like to see? How would you like uh, TBC to be implemented? Would you like to, you know, have your the server that you're playing on transfer or be extended to have TBC or have the option to to go either or so it, it's, it's almost guaranteed that it's going to be released but definitely man I'm just waiting TBC to play a prop paladin full time because at first if you remember I don't know if you were there or because I mean we're I'm asking you to go really far back in time but I had plans to go holy prod then I got my sulfurous and then that got in the way and then I had to adapt obviously and then basically I I gave up a little bit on prod paladin because you know there's so many things that I would need and so it's I love tanking as well I love tanking I love healing DPSing you know I like that back in the days because it was easy when I was a noob and I didn't know what the game was all about but I just can't wait to play a tank any, uh, again so and as a paladin and you know not having to struggle with the uh, the talents and all of that so I mean it's, de it's definitely possible but it's just don't have all the time it would take me to really enjoy tanking as a paladin all that much and then if I tank as a paladin I can't do this anymore and this is really a, a fantastic way to make some gold so I don't want to give that up oh schnitzel that's gonna be tight Whew. oh no there's one that survived okay no worries no worries we have an exorcism and then we have a holy shock so we'll be able to take care of him those little lashers though are kind of okay cool um actually i'll just wait for divine favor because i'm not really in a rush for anything so it doesn't really matter That's what's that what that's what can be that is what this is something that can be a little bit like oh uh, frightening at first is when you see the minions as you've seen earlier going like Allison's minion staying with the boss you might think oh my god they are going to aggro the boss as well but they actually don't so just something to keep in mind so how lucky are we gonna be okay nothing once I've had three rich thorium veins with four four loot windows or four hits so that that's if it, that happens to you you have a very good chances of uh, getting an arcane crystal because you have 12 uh, basically you have 12 ores uh, and then a bunch of dense stone and stuff like that so okay, second vein are we lucky enough to have a third one no fortunately Mr. Nick, no, I don't have 8 out of 8 right now. I have 5, uh, 6, sorry, 6 out of 8. Okay, now then stone and thorium or Come on, come on, Arcane Crystal, Arcane Crystal. No! Okay, we still have, still have a chance. One last, one last. I'm spamming symbol? What do you mean? How about you shut up, Streamlab? Don't worry, Nick. But, no, I have only 6. You don't necessarily need to go 8 out of 8 because the last, the, the 8 set bonus, which gives you, uh, inflicts 60 to 66 additional holy damage on the target of a paladin's judgment. Um, it's not really, for the run itself, it's not really important because you don't judge all that much. It helps you with the satyr if you ever need to aggro them and kill them. Uh, that can help, but otherwise you don't get all that much benefit from that 8 out of 8. So that means once you have 5 pieces, uh, you're going to be good to go. Something that I did in the video that I've been told and I was like, oh my god. You can reset instances while you're not, a par uh, while you're not in a group, which was not the case on my uh, private server, so I never 
you know, I never took the time to check. But you can even do it even faster. Once you're done, reset dungeon, boom. Don't even need to log out and log back in. But you can do that as well. Log out and back in, but it's just, it takes you 20, 25, 30 seconds. But yeah, uh, the pieces that I would strongly recommend that you get though are the crown, because it has shadow resist, which is good. Um, the shoulders, buff, I mean, you could go for them, but if you have something that has more spell power and that, you know, just claps a lot harder, uh, you could go for that instead. Um, the chest piece, I would go for the chest piece, so head and chest. Chest, because it has nature resist, which is important for the last boss. Which is also why I have a nature resist uh, enchant on my shoulders. Did he just get that? That's pretty cool. But uh, I would recommend that. Uh, no, the brace, the bracers for Lawbringer are not really all that good, anyways. Um, if you have like caster bracers, that would be very good. Um, the gloves, I would go for them for the shadow resist. So you would already have three piece there. Uh, the belt as well. So that's four piece. And then I think it's the boots that give you. Whew. That was close. That was close. And I think the boots. Let's just check real quick. I think they also give you bindings, belt, greaves. Uh, judgment they give you fire okay but at that point you just need another piece of gear whether it's the leggings or the, the bracers or the boots and then you're gonna have your five piece or it could be the shoulders as long as you have five piece you're gonna be good to go but like I said the gloves belt chest head are the most important ones because they give you that extra resist that is gonna that is going to obviously be better with the if you farm this specifically if you don't care and you just want to because your tier two are not prebis for healing They're, i don't know about the probably dpsing obviously as ret and uh, i don't know about tanking i don't think so but it's definitely it's definitely good for um, pvp and farming no, nothing cool So right now I am sitting at no uh, 111 shadow resist with my resistance aura on. Whew, that was close. That was close. And in terms of nature, I am at 36. Something that you can do to help you before you go, or if you have a friend that's doing uh, DMT jump runs, a uh, DME jump runs, or he's doing uh, DMT runs and whatever. And he's a druid. You can ask him to um, give you that um, mark of the wild because it gives you a little bit of buffs, but it mostly, most importantly, it gives you. I think it's 20 all resist. It's not all that much, but it can still help you reach that 90 uh, resistance threshold for shadow. And uh, at that point, I would be uh, sitting at 56 nature resist for the last boss. So that obviously helps you a lot. Obviously, if you have the buff, you don't want to die, because when you die, you lose it, obviously, but it gives you a little bit of a challenge. Okay, where is the Satyr? It's not here. Switch back to Shadow. Okay, cool. Right. Um, 16, 15, 20, 10, 10, okay. All right. And I, rem uh, I remember yesterday I had a comment on my video that was asking me, what do you do about the lashers that can drop, the, the lasher farm basically that you have access to uh, in the garden, do you add those lashers to the run? 
because they can drop like as you can see here the serrated petals i think you can see uh, even with the camera but the lasher root that sell for 17 silver each and a full stack of 40 goes for six gold 91 silver then you have the serrated petals and you have another i think another uh, great item that can drop and you know for the stack of 20 of serrated petals it sells for 12 gold 28 um, that's completely up to you you can do it I personally would not advise you to do it especially as you start getting more comfortable with the jump runs because you're not at the point where you clear them fast enough that you will have the message you've entered too many instances unless you have like insane caster gears which you know is not necessarily um, it's it's not common unless you're very rich and you can go in GDKP runs or you have a very very chill loot council or you're an officer or a guild leader then it might be easier for you but it's not necessarily the case so you will make a lot more money by making your jump runs shorter rather than uh, adding that it's about 10 minutes of lasher farming because yes you might say oh well in a full hour I might get a stack of serrated petals maybe but if it makes it so that you run one to two less run per hour what happens if in those runs you would have had an arcane crystal that on my server sells for I think the last time I checked it was like 67 gold would you rather have 20 gold or 67 like it's, it's always a gamble obviously because for the next five runs i might not have a single arcane crystal so in that case might as well get some of those gray items but really it really depends but i personally don't do it because of the fact that it makes my runs longer and then i am probably missing out on like the opportunity cost of missing out on a arcane crystal is too high for me to go for something that is only you know 12 6 gold for a full stack Uh, oh, I'm just not paying attention. Right now, I have um, my uh, Blackwing Lair Cloak with 5 all resist, but the only cloak is fire only. But as far as the nature resist is uh, concerned though, I would not really care all that much about uh, stacking too many of it and you know needing an f a full set because you, you want to have enough but not necessarily too much where you need to have more pieces, one for your raiding, one for your farming and maybe one for PVPing or whatever you know. I've tried to, to keep things uh, as optimized as possible. So this is why right now on my shoulders I can uh, afford losing five fire resist for Molten Core and Blackwing Lair because I mean, five fire resist is not going to do me uh, more good in Molten Core and uh, Blackwing Lair compared to having five increase nature resist in here. But yeah, no, right now I. But five resist to your cloak is, I think, the best one that you can get, and that's the shroud of pure thought. I use it mainly for the mana per five that it has on it, and whenever I need to heal me, obviously I have my uh, increased healing from the cape. But also, you know, ten stam and eleven intellect. That's good raw stats. Because on this boss, what is important is, first of all, your shadow resist. You need at least 90 to have a chance to resist the spells. Um, I think the in the video, the the chart that I showed was for, was for level 60 or somebody that is the same level as you. The boss is three levels lower than you, so you have a higher chance to resist the spells. But at least having 90 means that you have maybe 2% or 3% chance to uh, resist his sacrifice. That's the main thing that you want to be able to resist. 
because I can't tell you how many times I was like, oh my god, it's almost dead. And I was like, oh, I'm not at 100% health, which is what I should do. Or I had no healing potion and then I resisted his sacrifice. And I was like, oh my god, like it's, it's very important. The second most important thing is having a large enough health pool where, you know, I have 4,200. I would say at least 4k minimum if you could if you could have closer to 5,000 while still making sure you have a good amount of spell power of uh, intellect for mana on your gear and you know for um, crit chance and stuff like that that would be even better because that sacrifice lasts like what seven seconds with 300 damage a second so that's 2,100 health plus his auto attacks that are about 300 damage again in the seven second he's probably gonna deal three auto attacks so that's another thousand damage plus if you're lucky you will not cast his uh, is it intense pain but it's basically a, um, a shadow word pain so a dot that can be the spell but when you are under the sacrifice you can't do anything so that's another like 300 Per tick or 200 so you know you go through that <gasps> oh you see I resisted it you know I had I was 100% uh, HP and I had a healing potions so I would have been fine but still you don't want to scuff your runs just a clever hat though vendors for one gold 40 it's not bad it's not bad but yeah, Shadow Resist, high health pool, and then um, just having potions is extremely important. Health potions, the best ones that you have access to, so major healing potion, and you're going to be good to go. And now is a good time to start getting used to them, because as a Paladin, you start having access to your tier 2 which is the most versatile uh, tier of gear because obviously your tier 1 is healing tier 3 is healing as well insanely good for healing obviously I mean you look at the stats on the, the pieces and you're like oh my god I can't wait to have those but at the same time um, it's only healing it's only healing power so you have a lot more than spell power but obviously it only affects healing so right now is the good time to start because you have spell power on your gear and you have a bunch of very good uh, possible pieces of gear that you can get uh, from Molten Core and from uh, Blackwing Lair if you're lucky or if you pay if you have deep pockets to add to your um, spell it in arsenal so definitely good stuff My cough. My gone.
properties. Powering off. Powering on. Mic on. Mic off. Mic on. Okay. No, it should be good. Sometimes uh, it just shuts off. Uh, but yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a good one, but I didn't get to... I didn't get a chance to get my hands on this one, so... Nice, 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 nice. But yeah, if you're a dwarf, uh, having stone form really helps you with that boss because, as you can see, you get immune to his uh, wither, which is very, the uh, <laughs> very dangerous because it deals. It like it, the first one hit me for seven seven hundred and sixty one nature damage. And I think I've been hit as hard as like 850 or 860, so it, it's very important. It obviously makes you more uh, more healthier during the fight, so you don't need to spend as much mana healing yourself, or you don't need to use as much uh, heavy rune cloth bandages and so on. 810, oof, that's a big one. Oh, resisted enervate, nice. And I know that because I've been uh, I've been asked that question, but I've also been talking to some of my uh, guild uh, members about it. But you can also do those solo runs if you're a priest. Uh, I've seen one of my guild members do it. I think he's holy because I, I mean I don't know if he respect in between, but for raiding he's a he's a holy well a disc priest so with power infusion and but he's a healer, so. I mean, I don't know if you respect Shadow or anything, but obviously with Benediction, you can switch to, um, is it Anathema? But the, the other staff that gives uh, more damage, and then obviously you have uh, Mind Blast, you have uh, your, your Holy Spells, you have your Shield, you have your Shadow Word Pain, so you, you have a similar toolkit to the Paladin, whereas you can, uh, you can bubble yourself with the Shield. You have your Shadow Prot uh, for the first boss, you have your um, Cure Disease and Dispel, uh, which is very strong obviously for the last boss. Um, and he can do them solo as well, he even does them faster than me, because sometimes he gets to that point where he entered too many uh, instances recently, so I never get that because I do it him a little bit uh, slower but it's definitely doable as a solo priest i think warlocks can also do it because i've seen warlocks go out of the dungeon at the end and you know they were not followed by anybody so i guess that they can solo them as well not exactly sure how they deal with the uh the wither and the enervate from this boss i don't know if they um, they drain life and drain mana to keep up I have no idea, but in terms of uh, damage output with their dots, uh, they can deal insane, insane amounts of damage. So, like I said, I think I'm pretty sure it's possible for them. I've never played one, so I don't know the details about it. But I know the warlocks can. Um, I've seen videos on YouTube by uh, EBBN Flow that was doing a solo druid run. Again, not exactly sure how he does it, but it's possible. I think mages as well, so it's a it's it's a quite lucrative uh, endeavor to get into with the solo runs. I mean, you worst case if you're a warrior and you're like, oh man, I wish just get a healer with you. Um, Paladins are very good because of their auras. Uh, whether you skip hydro spawn or not, you have your frost. I, th I think he does frost damage never fought him to be honest but um, you have your frost aura you have your shadow aura for the last one and you have your um, 
dispels or your cleanse for this one here so i'm pretty sure you're the the bis healer in terms of uh dme jump runs so just grab a healer with you if you're a warrior and you need to make gold and you can still make a decent amount of gold if you if if you're going to uh do the runs with two people if you really want to maximize your money uh make sure one is a miner i uh, want uh you have mining herbalism and dis and enchanting because you can disenchant the green items and the blues for uh, instant uh, large brilliant shards so definitely something that you can add to all the gold that you can make because if you don't have uh, enchanting and you get like the the clever hat or there's other helms that you can get that only sell for like two gold well if you can get a shard that sells for like five to six gold no matter what well then you double the amount of gold that you get from the boss loot so that's obviously very strong and then you have one that can do the herbing the other one that does the mining and then you just split everything 50 50 at the end so it can be very good just wait for those to oh bubble consecrate and then boom nice now they all died at the same time and they were not too close cool Chance to get a crit with spell, fire resist, 12 intellect, 12 stamina. Yeah, I mean, I would replace uh, that one for the uh, well, I would use Dragon Slayer's signet for uh, seal of the Archmages instead because it will help you clap a little bit more, but at the same time, um. If you go for that, then you can't have you can't turn in the quest for the the head anymore. If you wanted to go, I don't know, uh, ret or something else. So it's just something to to keep in mind is that once you do those turn ins, you can't uh, go for any other item. <gasps> yes, the best part about having a um, a arcane crystal is changing that over here. Almost sulfurous chad. I have enough materials for 47 of uh, 50 bars. I don't have 47 bars crafted yet. But boom! Ah, oh, yes, that feels good. That feels good. Okay, boom. Word up. That's, like I said, you know, 60, 67, 70 gold price went up and up and up and up and up and up since like the last month or two <coughs> and once you're here I mean if the guy was AFK and I knew he was AFK or I knew I had like the the kit to really blast him I would probably kill him because if you die up there you cannot go back up as a ghost so if you're too far where you cannot go with your ghost like underneath underneath the little hole I jumped from um, you need to go all the way back to the spirit healer and then take a rest sickness and that's not something that you want so try to try to survive it it's true reset all instances ah loser um, and then boom even faster right now I have enough I have room for two more runs because I still have a I still have enough room for some dense stone, some thorium. Probably gonna take another stack. That should be fine. Do two more runs. Uh, I'm gonna go back to Iron Forge. Then by the time I, uh, we're done with that, we're gonna go and see what we have in the mail. I'm gonna show you the the status in the bank for all the materials, and then um, by that time, I'm probably gonna have to go. So. But I'm more than likely going to be uh, on tomorrow again doing some runs because as 
As long as I don't have my 50 Arcanine Bars or my 50 Arcane Crystals, I'm still going to be running those. And after that, finally we'll be able to uh, make things uh, make things different and more uh, enjoyable. Because I have a bunch of ideas, but I want to make sure that I'm done with my uh, Soul Furious first. I want to finish what I've started. Foils. Oof, oof. I got scared a little bit. Sometimes the way they, they like all clamp up, like the there's collision between the models, and then they get a little bit closer to to you than usual. So, oof. and yeah, like you see those ones goes, those ones go really close to the wall. So, extremely, be extremely careful with those. person view you can just look around corners something that could be interesting would be to do all those runs in first person view like a challenge or something that could be interesting or you just you or you raid and you only do first person view that could be <laughs> that could be a nice challenge because you're so used to seeing all of that uh, that space around you and obviously having a very large monitor helps you with that and you can be extremely aware of your surroundings but then going in first person where you only see an array that, uh, that that would be insane though in a raid in a 40 man raid because of the fact that everybody would get clamped up on you sometimes for some mechanics you need to uh the line of sight uh fire maw for example in blackwing lair and so on so you would probably see like everybody in your face, so you will not see anything else. But still, it would be interesting. Anyways. <laughs> Normally if I got the other satyr over there, there should not be any over here, but still be careful. We never know what Blizzard might be throwing at us, so. Normally there's only one out of, of the two, or there's none. And there's none, you're good. You're in good shape, obviously, because you can do the runs. Ah, schnitzel. Sometimes you turn the corner a little bit too fast, and then boom. <coughs> it's there. If you see that you're very close to getting to the boss, you don't want to spend your uh, divine favor for that. Because you want to keep it for the boss to have a faster boss fight. Now it's where those enriched mana biscuits come in handy. Full health, full mana, but you have your shadow resist, a boom, and then you're good to go. has been on for 55 minutes obviously because I'm streaming I'm not going uh, as hardcore but you know yeah normally by that time I would be uh, finishing my third run Cause normally I can do or I would be starting my fourth actually oh the clutch resist
Man, I just sometimes I just think about how this farm is going to how easy it's going to be when we have some AQ and max gear. It's good. I mean, with shadow resist and nature resist and just pieces with like triple green stats like spell power or spell power crit and uh, mana per five. Like, oh man, <clears throat> that would be very good. I'm going to tell you guys, this first boss is going to be the hardest one, by the way. If you have a similar learning curve and learning experience as I've had, uh, it's definitely going to be the hardest boss because of the fact that if you do a little mistake, if you're two yards to the left when you should not be, uh, you're going to have big problems. It's going to kill you, then you're going to, you're going to have to run all the way back to the instance. Then you're gonna have to wait and run all the way back to the boss. Like the last boss, uh, yeah, as long as you have uh, consumables, you're gonna be fine. And you know, by level 60 with a decent amount of gear, I mean you're you're gonna have a decent pool of mana and decent pool of health. And he just periodically casts his spell, and they're not uh, they're not gonna deal a huge amount of damage very quickly like his uh, sacrifice can do. So you're gonna be able to manage it more effectively efficiently so but this one oof once you master this this motherfucker you're gonna be fine okay you, you won't have any more problems with the run because everything is gonna be uh downhill <laughs> bro lock mirror romatis bro it's i wish i can get this i wish like i, I really hope i can get it but that's the thing right now, if I look at the raid composition that we have right now. We have two, uh, well, we have one boomkin that is the top uh, North American parsing boomkin. From what I've heard, but I've, I don't know how to look for parses and, uh, but anyways, that's what I've been told. <laughs> and you see the damage meters and you can believe that because he is pumping. Anyways. So he is on the list of priority. We have another uh, player in our guild that is a heavy Lotus Farmer. We're talking about like, we're talking a, a WoW billionaire. Over like a thousand Lotus uh, picked up since the beginning of a classic WoW and you know, still counting, so definitely. Then we have one of our Paladin, it's, he's our officer. He hasn't been on in almost a month because of the COVID-19. They laid off a bunch of employees, from what I've heard, and he's a manager, so he had to took all of that, uh, <clears throat> all the the work. So he hasn't been on for like four weeks, almost, or almost five. No, we're going to be on our fifth week, I think. And he still has a blue hammer, the hammer of grace. So he's on the priority list. So we're already at three people, and then I am want to be on that list. I don't exactly know if I'm going to be or where I'm going to be, but. You know, there's at least three other people that are going to be comp I need to compete with for a Lockamir, so. And we haven't had a single Lockamir yet, so. But definitely, if you can get Lockamir. Oh my god, resist. Three resist. Is it three resists during that fight? Holy shnits, I'm just dumping on this dude. But yeah, the Lockamir, bro. If I get a Lockamir, you're going to see me clapping people in PvP as a spell it in, that's for sure. And you're going to see montage and whatever because it's it's 84 spell power then you add another 30 spell power like i've seen people go with like the the, the brainlet move of putting 55 healing on it and they're like a druid or something and it's like yeah i understand that you're a healer but for the love of god like pull 30 spell power that's the red pill when it comes to lock and Like, especially if you're a druid, when the mobs, the big mobs in BWL get their uh, nature resist um, weakness, bro, you're going to be able to parse a little bit on them. Like, boom, yeah, as well. This one, Helm of Awareness, only sells for uh, 1 gold 36, and it's a blue. 
And if I was enchanting, oh, that could be very strong, obviously. I could get a crystal worth like six gold no matter what, so. Like I said earlier, enchanting is very powerful for those runs. Like a good alternative to double gathering would be mining and enchanting for those. Oh, ah, god damn. Looks like we're clearing all of them. Right, maybe we'll get a, maybe we can get a set of uh, edge masters. We never know. <laughs> but yeah, lock a mirror, man. Oh, I hope, I hope. It's on my wish list. That's the first item on my wish list, definitely. Cause it's such a strong weapon. If you guys don't know, I don't know the stats, but uh, this is the one I'm talking about. Like increase healing, uh, increase damage and healing done by magical spells and effect by 84. Ah, oh, 18 intellect, 10 stand, some spirits. What? Oh man. Strength, stamina, and oh health. Okay, I, I read. Uh, what are those? Ah, uh, at least I get something worth two gold. So that satir was a little bit more lucrative than the the average, but still. Anyways, um, Lockamere, and it has a, a, a little uh, yellow text on it. Bro, and it goes super well. Like it matches the. Uh, color scheme of my tier two. Oh, man, I want that so bad. With the uh, exalted uh, AV offhand, the Therizane's might or Therizane's tier, I don't know exactly what it is, but for another 30 something, I think it's 35, is it 35 spell power? Anyway, so from those two items with the spell power enchant you get 145 or so almost 150 spell power oh man plus the your five piece or you can go eight piece at that point and then imagine that going a spell it in and when you have your uh hodge you can switch i can s people are going to be like oh damn i didn't even talk to the dude Oh, shit. I was too caught up uh, about Lockamere. But uh, imagine that. <clears throat> Start blasting people. They're like, oh my god, he's just pellet in with the Lockamere. What a what a chad. What a, what a lucky mother ducker. And then you just, <clears throat> just keep slapping him in the face, you know? And then <clears throat> he's, he doesn't know what's going to happen. He gets hodged to a Consecrate and whatever. And then you switch to your... Sulfurous, so then he's like, Oh my god, and then you get a uh, enhanced seal of command uh, judgment, a judgment of command, boom, and hopefully, you get a swing, Tack! so you, and like a swing with a proc of seal of command, so you just blast their face open, and then you switch back to your lock of mirror when the stun is to, to keep going with the the spell power oh man that would be that would be insane i really wish i can eventually uh, reach that point but we'll have to to pray to the loot gods because we we need at least i would say at least three lock of mirror technically technically two without doing too much drama three hopefully Oh yeah, the toe app, that would be insane as well. I know exactly which one you mean. Um, gold mag, is it? Yeah, talisman of ephemeral power. Oh, well, hello there, Mr. Uh, Wartwood Crusher. But yes, uh, <laughs> man, I don't know what's your situation in terms of rating, Nick, but um, for in terms of my guild, we have a... a in the loot council, one of the officer and a class leader is a mage. So <laughs> and when you have a mage council, you can be assured that this trinket is not going to be given to any other uh, classes than casters for quite a while. Which is fine, you know, because I would probably be given, uh, you know, 
know, shards of the scale, rejuvenation gem, and stuff like that, which is fine, you know? I'm healing. But man, for the off spec, barrel. Ooh, dusty tome. Are we gonna be are we gonna be lucky? Are we going to be lucky? Imagine a four or compendium right there. Oh schnitzel. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Oh no! Son of a <sighs> Hold up, can I can I do it before? Oh, it's not broken rip. Thought I had to, man, I was legit like one millisecond away from opening. Yeah, that's the thing. One minute, one minute and a half cooldown for 175 spell power. It's insane. You're absolutely right. It is insane. It's quite scuffed. Well, rip a potential four or compendium. Because that's the thing, you know, other trinkets like this uh, second wind that gives me three, uh, 30 mana every one second for 10 seconds, that's 300 mana. 15 minutes cooldown. Like, this is crazy cooldowns for what it gives you. Burst of knowledge, 15 minutes. Uh, the Cannonball Runner, 5 minute cooldown. The uh, Berov thing, 10 minutes. Like, it's crazy, but... Toep, 175 spell power, 1 minute 30 second cooldown. Pfft. You get one every fight, every boss fight, basically. So you can parse and... Oh, man, that would be insane. Like, in a fight for Zevrim, lasting 5 minute 12 second. Let's take the... The fastest kill I've had so far. Um, that's three use. It's insane. And that would bring the time down, obviously, to maybe closer to four minutes, 55 seconds, or whatever. Oh my god, I sh just. I'm getting aroused just thinking about it, bro. <laughs> insane. Because, yeah, I can't open it. I'm gonna try it. Because I don't think, yeah, I can't loot it. Yeah, I can't open that. It's like a chest. <clears throat> Man, whatever. It's probably just a copy, a BS copy of Nat Pagel's fishing guide and the, I think the, the, the wool thing there. I guess we'll never know. But yeah, imagine that. <clears throat> a Toep with a Neltharian's tier right now. With a Lokomir. Five piece, um, just five piece um, tier two for the increased spell power. How much is it again? It's 47, which is very cool. And then for the other pieces of gear, like straight OP caster. Uh, caster status uh, gear with like uh, spell crit and a lot of spell power like there's some good rings as well that you can get uh, there's one in BWL I think it's like black rock ring mana for five spell power and I think you get uh, I think you get int and stam so very cool <coughs> imagine that He would be a legit steel cannon, not a glass cannon with full of cloth, but straight steel cannon, just pumping down exorcism and holy shocks on those demons. Maybe one day, maybe one day. Hopefully before TBC releases. But that's... That's what I want to see, guys. There's always been the question, what do you want to see after Classic? Classic Plus or TBC? 
I don't know if it's a good thing to, uh, and I don't want to be mean, but I don't know if it's, it's a very good thing to, to trust uh, the blizzard. What? Bro, somebody in my guild is asking a price check for an Ace of Beast? That's like 700 gold! What the actual... And I'm sitting here and I... Oh my god. Oh, oh, I, never, I didn't even realize it was time to... Oof, oof, oof. I'm getting clapped, I'm getting clapped. Okay, we're good, we're good. Oh my, he just got something worth 700 gold! Oh, okay, they're, they're, they're doing a guild run at least. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Damn, son, what the heck? Yo, grats, bros. Grats. Already full bags. Okay, well that... Okay, are the other mobs? Yes, they are quite far. That's a good thing. When they are far, it makes it safer for you. It gives you maybe one more second of a uh, reaction time, but... <coughs> Anyways, yeah, Ace of Beast, very high ticket item. All right, what do we get now? That being said, I don't even 70 total wipes, but s the wipes is the time, the number of time you clap him. Although I've, I've died a few times just trying the stuff around, but so I defeated him maybe 60, 65 times. The remaining uh, is me dying. But like I said, like I say on the video. If you die after the, the, the way has been opened and the minions uh, got out, that means after you bring him down to 50% or so, you can get back here. You know, you get back into the instance, you run back, and then you can drop down and the, the way will still be opened. Ah, la la. Tough decision, tough decision. 17 silver. Hmm, do I have anything that is not worth oh actually you know what i'm gonna craft one of those and then boom it's gonna make me one there we go haha <laughs> ba ba boom no more oh no give me another cream crystal no Yeah, okay. No worries. Um, that was three runs. Was it three? No, that was... Was it three or four? I don't even remember. I've been so caught up in what I've been saying, but... Three or four runs. One hour, 15 minutes. Although I've been taking a little bit more time than usual. I don't think... I think I... Although, no, if normally it takes me... No, I think... No, I think we did three. Ah, oh, burning bar, boom. Okay, first things first. We're at 1,500 flush, going back to 1,499, but then we sell all of that. Boom. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, now we have one, two, three stacks of those one stack of almost two stacks okay we get this we got this we have this we have this if you're paying close attention you see I have the mats for core hound belt right over here for cured rugged leather uh, cure rugged hide sorry eight fury core ten enchanted leather for iron web spider silk and twelve core leather I've got this it's just I have some loot from prior runs as well, but in I think I did what? Let's see. We did, I think we did three today. Pretty sure it's three, guys. A little bit more than 20 minutes. Yeah, one hour, 15 minutes. That's good. 
uh, with me talking and just taking my time. Yes, and I did maybe two last night before logging off, so in five runs. Um, oh, you might not see it, but I got 19 Dreamfoil, 19 Rune Cloth, 1 Arcane Crystal, 1 Libram of Rapidity. I've never had any other Libram than this one, which is quite sad. 33 Thorium Ore, uh, 39 Dense Stone, 15 Grim's Blood, 4 Ghost Mushrooms, and then 1 pair of Blue Pants Unbridled Leggings. Which is quite bad, but still better than nothing and I think I got one star ruby star rubies are worth like 60 silver 50 silver 60 silver one gold at the very very most arcanite bar and some mongoose so before we go out we're gonna go smelt we're gonna go sell some things on the auction house and I'm giving you a nice oh what the hell is what I want to do can you guys see it Yes, you can still see it, no matter, even with the thing. So, this is the progression of all the loot and all the uh, resources. So, my Isle of Sulfurus, my 8 ingots, my 43 bars, so 43. I should even upgrade it, because I got one today. That's true, 43 out of 50. Enough materials for 47. If I'm right... Uh, no, Flag Basher, yes, 47, so we need only three more crystals, and then we have enough Arcanite bars, well, we have enough of the materials, and you know what, six days, four or five days actually, because I have some friends in the guild that can help me with their transmutes, we're going to be good to go, uh, and then we have everything else, and yeah, do you have anything to put in the, in the bank, I'm... Might as well show you the bank. I've been stacking uh, thorium bars for a lot of different, uh, for my Demon Forge breastplates and for like my, at first I thought that I might want a, um, what's this called again, a Lionheart and a Stronghold gauntlets. But uh, in the end, no, I don't think that I'm going to do all of those crafting. But I'm keeping enough for at least my Demon Forge breastplate. That's something that I have on my uh, buying list. Or crafting list after I'm done with my hammer because I want to try something a um, specific set of gear to try um, and do the lasher farm as a holy paladin as efficiently as possible and I think that those gear are going to help me in the process so still the, the Chad green winter hat but no okay let's craft some bandages I'm gonna get 16 which is just enough that's what's kind of nice with the um, with the run as well is that for your bandages you can be self-sufficient as you kill satir because they are just standing in the way or you aggro them like a um, well you aggro them actually it's, it's sometimes it happened uh, you get room cloth and you can make the bandages that you use for owls and so I've never had to uh, to buy any room cloth since the beginning, and I've always been cycling them through, on and on and on. So uh, that's quite interesting. Um, it makes it it makes it better because you don't have to spend like. Did I even? Did I even? Uh, yeah, not even because my greater mana potions. I crafted them when I was leveling my alts uh, alchemy skills. One gold, <laughs> 80 gold, imagine that. So, so, some big dreamers here, 50 for a Libram of Rapidity. One gold, 95. Let's just put it to one gold, like one gold and 90. I'm trying to get some more copper. Um, Arcane Crystals, 66 gold, like, it's, it's crazy. I remember the good old days when they were at, like, 45, 50 gold. Arcanite Bar, that's, that's 80 gold, holy schnitzel. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Dream Foil, a full stack goes for how much? At that point, I'm gonna wait to have a full stack of 20. I only have 19, 12, 50, okay, not bad. 
not bad. It's within the range. Grum's blood, uh, eight gold. Yeah, that's me. That's true. Stack with only seven twenty. Oh, okay, I've been undercut quite heavily by Vigola, which is stupid. I mean, oh, these ones are at seven gold. Okay, me. That's never mind. Okay, never mind. Some people undercut like crazy, but I mean, that helps the people buying because it, they drive the market price down. Six gold, five gold for a stack of den stone. Holy shiz. Yeah, five gold. 470. Thank you very much. And I have another one ready to go eventually. I'm gonna go smelt my thorium bar. How much can we expect to have per stack? Ah, 360. Not bad, not bad. It's not necessarily the, the, the most lucrative part of the run when you get the den stone and the, the thorium bars, but it's still something to take advantage of. I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do with those leggings. Thick Dad IRL. Nice. So yeah, the status right now is uh, 1500 gold. Uh, I think we're sitting on a, a nice little throne of money what am i gonna buy with this um as you can see sorry I have a bottomless bag i'm probably going to buy a lot of uh sorry a lot of moon cloth in bulk to get three more bottomless bags because i mean i'm so done waiting for anixia bags to drop like i won one roll Back in the days, uh, like in November or something. But I sold it because I needed money for uh, obviously my hammer. And the guy I sold, I sold it to had been, you know, had been screwed over in terms of loot that night. So anyways, I was ready to sell him for like 200 gold. Yeah, he gave me like 300 or 275. I was like, <laughs> even better than I expected. So... Obviously, I made a little bit of money there, but since then, I haven't had a single roll, I think, over 50 for an extra bag. It's like, it's always been like a, a 5, a 15, oh, a 2. I've had a 1, and it's it's always been very bad rolls, so. I'm a little bit pissed, and I'm done and over with, so I'm just going to craft my bags and whatever. If I get, if I get other Anixia bags at that point, I might just sell them to guildies and whatever, so just uh, make the money back on my bottom less but uh, this is what I want to pay for uh, what's what's coming next in terms of uh, expenses um, okay one full stack and then 17 perfect we're gonna go sell that and the ghost mushrooms we're gonna keep the other herds here until we get full stacks I always sell at full stacks I don't feel like selling half stacks at half a price or a little bit more is better like me when I buy I buy f full stacks so when I sell I sell full stacks because I just think that's the best way to do it although ghost mushrooms they can sell quite well by the unit oh damn okay 113 as you can see, I've had a bunch lately. 113 and 9. So it's safe to say all those ones are going to come back, bounce back. But that's why uh, 113, a little bit more, 120, okay. 1 gold. How much did we save? 300, 3 gold 60 something? 67? 3 gold 60. Is there a better price? No. 3 gold 60 and 275. 360. Um. Yeah. That's pretty much it. All the rest is, uh. 
Although I'm gonna send my arcane crystal to my alt, but beside that, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Uh, yeah, just a little bit before the time had to go off, so. Yes, sir. Chad. Yeah. <laughs> nice. With a COD band. That's always funny to see a cauterizing band on the Red Paladin, but whatever. Oh, we have a field mark. We have had a Grand Marshal over here. No enchant though? What? Rip. You'd think that would be the first thing you would put on a Grand Marshal's Claymore. Ah, but he just reached Grand Marshal. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. But yes! That's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Thank you to Philip and Nick for making the chat rolling and uh, interacting with me. I always like that. If you have any questions, I'm always interested in answering you and, you know, having a chat and uh, getting to, to see and hear uh, other uh, perspective and point of view. So thank you very much, guys. We will see us soon. Hopefully tomorrow, we're pr I'm probably gonna still be going for my uh, my regular Dire Maul jump run, so tune in for that. We are close to our goal, almost 50 bars. At uh, 50 bars, we're gonna crab the hammer, and I want to make a nice video about it. So um, this is obviously incoming, and I'm gonna be able to be like Mr. Uh, like Lika and then Omni Knight and run around with my uh, RP hammer. And this one, this dude over there, Evaldi. So take care of yourself, guys. Stay at home and uh, do what you have to do to stay healthy. And we'll see you soon, okay? Till then, have a good one. Most importantly, stay blessed.